Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. So far we have understood about CTS goals, clock gating checks and then we also understood about integrated clock gates in the last lecture only. In today's video, we will be understanding about different type of clocks such as master clock, generated clock and virtual clock. Without any delay, let us begin with our understanding for master clock. So let us take an example here. We have seen this kind of circuit previously also in the clock gating videos. So if you see this is your common clock path, let us say that it is coming from a port and the port name is CLK. So as you can see that this is coming from a port, this is your port. It is your clock source and the master clock is the clock which is defined as a physical clock and it has a physical source or clock port from where it will be coming. If it is your design where clock source is not located, then it is coming from a clock port. But if you go further down, somewhere in your full chip, there will be clock source, clock generator from where the clock is being generated. And that is your PLL, that is phase log loop. Sometimes from the outside world, it could be a crystal oscillator or something like that from where it is coming. So master clock source will send the clock with some latency. It will be coming to your clock port. From clock port, it will come inside the design. That is the master clock. Now the first question that comes here is, how do you define your clock? So the clock is defined in the constraint file and commonly the command will be something like this. So create underscore clock is the command. After that hyphen period you give, that is five here and then you give the port name or your clock source name. That is how you define your master clock. Now let us try to understand generated clock. So generated clock is a clock which is derived from the master clock. A master clock is defined using the create clock specification that we have seen already. And when new clock is generated in a design that is based on a master clock, then the new clock can be defined as a generated clock. So here we have taken this example of a divided by two circuitry for a clock. The output of this circuitry from the Q pin will be actually divided by two frequency of the input that we will see very soon. But first now let us understand that this is the divided by two circuitry and one would define a generated clock at the output of this. So this is your generated clock which is going to FF2 here in this particular example and this definition is needed. How do you define this clock? So the definition point of the generated clock will be output pin and how do you define is like this. So this is the command where we have already defined your clock source. This is your master clock and after that we give command like this create generated clock and the output pin here will be giving the clock name as CLKP DYV2. This is your divided by two clock which is coming from the source. So source is still the same and that is your master clock source but divided by two will be coming at the output of this. So UFF1 is your this instance and output pin of this. So that will become your starting point for generated clock and this definition is very much needed because STA engine does not know that clock period has changed at the output of this divided by two logic and more importantly what is the new period that also is needed to be defined so that is why we define it like this now let us try to understand the working of this divided by two logic this is your q bar pin and it is feeding back to the d pin and this is your divided by two logic so let us try to understand this so this is your clk port from which it is giving as input of master clock and this is our master clock first waveform and master clock is your CLK waveform. So how it is? So when your CLK A, so this is your edge triggered logic. When it goes high, it will trigger and it will send whatever the input is. And assume that let us say that your data is first time it is high and sec uh, after that it will go low. So let's say now it is first time it is high. At that time, what will happen is your whatever the data is, it will be fed output. So let us say that it is high and after that next clock waveform is coming at this edge. And let's say if the input was one output has gone one and that is what is coming as the output. And this is your divided by two logic CLK P DIV two logic. So this is your waveform which is coming here. 
So the waveform will be CLK P D I V two. This is the waveform which is coming out. So first it will be remaining high until the next rising edge occurs. The, until then it will not take any other output. So Q will remain high until then. And after that, once it goes again trigger to the rising edge, again it comes. At that time, we know that this Q was one, so Q bar was zero, and this Q bar was fed already, and that is here waiting for triggering. And once it goes high again, at that time it will trigger, and one goes to zero in the next rising edge, and that is this rising edge. So after that time, it will go from one to zero. So that one to zero trigger. This one is happening here, and that is how you can see that in the one full cycle you have only re retained one, and after that in one full cycle until next rising edge comes it will remain zero only. So at that time it will feed zero here, and after next rising edge occurs this zero, this since it was zero so it was one, and this one is fed again here. and it was waiting for this next rising edge and and as soon as this rising edge is occurring up third rising edge at that time this one this zero is changing to one so this output will change to one in the third rising edge and that is this rising edge so that is why you can see that in one full two full cycles there is one single clock cycle coming out and that is your clkp diy2 so you can see that frequency of the waveform has reduced by 2 or you can say that time period has doubled so if your clk was 1 nanosecond this clkp diy2 will be 2 nanosecond clock period one most commonly asked question in the interview is why do we need generated clocks at all we can have directly one new master clock defined right with the frequency of clkp diy2 that can be done but defining a master clock instead of a generated clock means we have to create a new clock domain this is not a problem at all but actually what happens is you will have more clock domains to deal with in setting up the constraints for sta and defining the new clock as a generated clock does not create a new clock domain so you are actually reducing your overhead for creating more constraints for a separate clock and the big advantage of generated clock over defining a new master clock is that source latency is not automatically included in case of master clock but you have you can see that in the generated clock source latency is automatically included you don't have to worry about it at all now let us try to understand what is virtual clocks so let us take an example to understand it so this is your virtual clocks uh, example here if you understand this is your design and this orange color represents your design boundary that means your clock port will be somewhere here from which the clock is getting inside and it is getting distributed to this registers now this is your data port from where you are seeing an interface path and if you see that this is your outside somewhere flop and sometimes to understand what tool does it it will try to replicate and it does not have any knowledge about outside world so it will assume that there is a virtual flip flop with a virtual clock associated here so this clock is your virtual clock it will have the properties which you need to define and then based on that it will calculate your reg to reg timing path for an interface we have discussed this type of topic already in the interface path related topics that you can go and visit in the channel you will easily find very interesting topics describing all this kind of interface paths so this is your in to reg path in to reg means this is input and then this is your input port this is or uh, going to the register so input to register path and this is your virtual clock now the question is how do we define the virtual clock if we go by the definition of our previous commands so if you see we have already seen the definition for master clock and generated clock in the master clock we have to specify the clock port name that is why we specified get ports after the clock clock definition but if we have to define this virtual clock let's say the name of the clock we are giving as v underscore clk so the command will be create underscore clock so it is very similar in definition with respect to your master clock definition so this is how you will define your clock period 
बट आफ्टर दैट यू विल डिफाइन द क्लॉक नेम वी अंडर स्कोर सी एल के बट यू डोंट डिफाइन एनी सोर्स हियर सो द मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ मास्टर क्लॉक एंड द वर्चुअल क्लॉक इज That virtual clock is defined with no specification of source pin or port pin. So that is how you define your virtual clock, and that is how engine also understand that it is a virtual clock because it does not have any source defined. But if any source is defined, so the latency is taken from that source only, and that is how tool understands that this source is there. So this is your master clock, this is generated clock, and this one is your virtual clock that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos please do give your important feedback in the comment section and do like share and subscribe to the channel thank you